little baby. That's the baby to my four-seater. This is my four-seater's little baby, y'all. What's up YouTube? Nick here and uh, I just got done working on this customer's go-kart here. This is a Red Fox just like the four-seater that y'all watched me build on this channel. This is the same cart but before I touched it right here. This is how my four-seater looked when I started. I had three of these frames and I cut them up and made my four-seater. Well, I had a guy bring me this, and, you know, he's like, yeah, I just need it to be right. It's not right. So I looked at it, and somebody, instead of putting the spacer in here and spacing the clutch out like they were supposed to, they slid the engine over instead of spacing it and drilled two holes in the engine plate and mounted the engine there instead of spacing this out. And leaving the engine where it's supposed to be. This cart also used to have the brakes that pushed against the tires and somebody has cut them off as you see here. There was one on each side. Somebody has cut them off and added this drum brake. This four inch brake here and the brake was sliding off and ending up right here and not so you couldn't brake there was no brake so I added these two little brackets so now there's no way for the brake pedal to slide off it might not be the prettiest thing in the world but this little bracket will stop that band brake from coming off so he has brakes now we fixed that we hooked up the kill switch we put a return spring on the brake pedal we made it so the engine can slide forward and backwards and you can actually tighten up the chain but yeah, anyway, that's what my Red Fox looked like prior to becoming a four-seater. No roll cage. No live axle. Little baby. That's the baby to my four-seater. This is my four-seater's little baby, y'all. Anyway. We got him right. Now I want to talk about the 4T series torque converter kit and the 420 Predator engine. All right. Well, my main issue is with stopping and with this torque converter driver pulley sticking. All right. And what what it is basically when you come to a complete stop, the torque converter kit is still trying to push you and keeps you going so you can't come to a complete stop. Alright, and there's some little cam rollers in here that slide on this little rail and the cam rollers are basically getting jammed up and the best way to eliminate this would be to take them apart and clean everything, put some new graphite on there and put it all back together. So. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how to take apart these 40 series torque converter kit driver pulleys and we'll show you how to clean them and put them back together. Now the way to remember driver and driven pulley, you got your driver pulley, you got your driven pulley and one way I remember is driver driven. Okay, you got the person driving the car and you got the person being driven in the car. So the motor's driving this one, this one's being pulled by this one driver driven driver driven all right that's one way you can remember uh, something I do to remember which one is driven which one is driver but anyway we're gonna go ahead and uh, bust these driver pulleys apart and take a look down inside of there and give them some fresh spray some graphite so first thing you want to do is you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver to lower these little uh, washers here. Get my hammer. So 
So you got these washers here, which is basically, I guess you'd call it a lock washer. But you want to lower them down. Once you get them down, I'll use a bigger screwdriver. Alright, so we got that washer down. And do the same with this one. Use this little screwdriver. It's got a smaller tip, that's why I'm using this one. But it'll bend easier. Ow! Got me. So you got your little screwdriver, get started. Come back, lower it down. Alright, once you got your washers lowered down, the next thing you're going to want to do is remove these nuts. And these nuts can be a big pain to get off. So one thing that I do, and I'll show you here, is I actually have, here I'll show you with this one. I've actually took these and I've took my cutoff wheel and cut a little notch in each side of that there, as you can see so that I can clamp that into my vise alright once I clamp that into my vise you can take a big adjustable end wrench and put on there and bust it loose now I had a little four inch Harbor Freight vise and I'll show you some footage of what clamping this on the little Harbor Freight four inch vise and putting a lot of pressure did to my vise it basically took my jaws, instead of being flat jaws, it made one side cockeyed, so when you lock your vise down, it's like this, and you gotta put a whole bunch of torque to make it go back flat. So I messed up my little 4-inch vise doing that with this. So I basically wanted an impact to put on my half-inch impact and take this off. So, in order to do that, I went out and bought this kit, and I'll show you my kit. This is the Jumbo Socket Set from Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh Jumbo Socket Set. And it's hard to find the really big sockets that I needed for this job. It's a 45 millimeter and I looked everywhere. So if you're looking for this, just for this job, I can recommend this kit here. 20 pieces, 3 quarter inch drive, has a 19 millimeter to a 50 millimeter in here. And you've got a 4 inch extension. And you got an 8 inch extension. You got a breaker bar, which is really nice. So it comes with a breaker bar. And these are 3 quarter inch. And you've got from 19 millimeter all the way up to 50. And you need, of course, the 45 millimeter for this job here. So uh, we'll grab our 45 millimeter out of there. And basically, we're going to put a half inch to 3 quarter adapter on here and slap that on here and just bust it with my impact and be done. Alright, now let's say you don't want to go out and spend some money on this set. Now this set is almost $60 with your coupon. It knocks it down to about 48 bucks. So you get this 3 quarter inch jumbo socket set for about $48 at Harbor Freight and uh, so you could go that route I'll put this on it just to make it look better for you so you could buy this you know 48 bucks 3 quarter inch ratchet all that get that done put it on your impact use that or you can do like Cartfab did and take an old 1 inch axle and cut it cut a little groove in it weld it together and create your own tool so now, basically, instead of clamping it on the vise this way, you would clamp it on the vise like so and drop your tool in there to bust it loose. So you're basically going to have the clamp holding this big nut here, this 45 millimeter nut. Drop it in there, bust it loose that way. So that's how I'm going to do mine, just because I want to try it. So let's go to the vise and make it work. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to, after you've got your flat washer lowered back down, 
you got to take this nut off. Now, this thing is under spring action, so be careful with that. So to take my nut off, I'm going to clamp the nut in the vise, find my keyway in here, match that keyway up, and loosen it up. That has now loosened this nut. See? Once again, this is under spring tension in here. So once you get this apart, hold it together with your hands. Alright. My washer has turned. So I need to go get a flathead screwdriver and turn this washer back. Shouldn't come apart, but let's go ahead and stick this nut back on there. Just so it doesn't shoot apart while I'm gone. Get off there. Just in case it tries to shoot apart. Alright. Show you what I'm talking about. There's two flat sides here. And both flat surfaces. <clears throat> one flat side has a flat side on the washer also. That has spun around. So I have to get that back over. And keep in mind, this is under pressure. So this will want to shoot off. So just in case. A little bit more. Still's not enough. There it goes. Alright. Once you get that off, you've got your washer and your nut. And we're going to go back to the workbench so that you can see what's going on better. So let's take this to the workbench. Alright. So we are back at the old workbench. <clears throat> Once you take this apart, you've got your spring. You've got this little copper ring here. Looks pretty good. Alright, so as you can see, this is considered the movable have, the movable sheave, whatever you want to call it. It's movable. You also have another brass fitting inside. Whoop. I'm going to take that out so I don't lose it. Alright, now with your cam rollers, just pull them right out, pull it out, pull it out, see what we got here. So what I'm going to do for cleaning is I'm going to take some brake cleaner and <clears throat> I am going to clean every one of these rollers and every piece of this torque converter kit that you see here. I'm going to go ahead and clean. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, this stuff stinks really bad, so I'm going to take these outside. Grab right back. Got that cleaned up with the old spray. Got our cam rollers. Now I need to make uh, a shield. Everybody knows what this is. All right, so <clears throat> you basically want to spray everything with graphite except for where the belt's going. So not here, not here, not here. Alright. So 
we got your graphite. Yeah, let's do it so you can see here. Tedious. All right. There's them two. Not too shabby. Next, we need the roller weights sprayed down. Can I get that? Yeah. All right. Let's get that out of the way. that dry you can pretty much tell once it dries you can see how it's starting to dry over here but it's not dry there see in here it's dry over here it's not dry where I have a whole lot sitting in them cups so uh, yeah I'll let this dry up for a minute now pretty good this one's dry already you can see I'm gonna go ahead and throw my brass bushing back on there get my spring on there Pushing back in there. Now, once you put these roller weights back in, you'll notice how, let's see if you can see this, you'll notice how there's like a little bar on one side. So you're going to put the hook so that the you go in the bars on the other side and you just come in the opposite way. You'll see the bar and you're the complete opposite now. There we go. Just keep going that way down the line. Sure. So what you'll notice is my hooks are facing away from each other, every one of them. This don't really matter. You can put these hooks on any way you want, to be honest with you. I just like to do this. This is my preference. If you want to know how I do it, this is how I do it. Oh, and this one didn't match up, see? So, just never know. Alright, that one's dry. This one's not. Got your cam rollers, your springs, everything sitting back in the movable sheave or the movable half. It's easier for people to remember half. We're going to finish letting this one dry. It's almost done. I just got a lot on that one, I guess. All right, see how far she sticks in there? Let's get 
get this out of the way. Next, you're just going to push the spring, compress your spring back down. Sometimes if it doesn't want to go, just shimmy it, shaking left and right. Next, you're going to put your washer so the flat side <clears throat> is on there. And then take your nut, put her on there. All right. Now you can pretty much tell exactly where it was. Let's tighten that up a little bit. And tighten it up as much as I can by hand. All right. All right. Now I'm gonna take it over here and put it on the vise and use my tool and get a little bit more on it. Put your nut in the vise. Find your keyway. And tighten her up. Right, now the only thing left to do is fold your washer back up. Make it a, walk, a lock washer. Get my hammer. All right, so you got your washer back on there. She's ready to go. Now, I've got one more to do. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to uh, take this other torque converter, tear it down, get it done, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.